We have two other methods we need to write. The first was updating preferences, and the second was a document modal alert with title with message. I say we do that one next. I'll start it off right here. And the title is going to be an in a string. We'll call it title. And with message, also an NS string. And this will be the error text. I'll bring it down on its own line. Scroll the window up so we can see what we're typing. And here we're going to create an NS alert. And we'll call it alert. We'll say NS alert, a lock. And knit, and we're also going to auto release this. And notice how when I put the brace on the right hand side, that on the very left hand side of the NS alert, it matches that brace for me. See that? That's pretty cool. That's a pretty new feature in Xcode. And now we're going to start configuring our alert just like we did with the NS task. So we're going to talk to the alert. So we'll say alert, and we're going to add a button with title. And the title is going to be OK. Then we're going to set the message text. And that's going to be title. I know that doesn't make much sense. You would think that would be set message title. Then we're going to set informative text. Now, the informative text, that's actually the error text. We'll set the alert style and we'll use NS warning alert style. Now that we have it all configured, we'll tell the alert to display itself as a sheet. So we'll say alert and it's begin. Well, this is a long one. It's begin sheet modal for window, modal delegate, did in selector, context info. So the window that we're going to begin for is our main window. Our delegate is going to be self. Our did in selector will be nil. So we're not going to use that. And our context info will be nil. Close off the brace. And once again, I'm going to put all these on their own line. Just to make it easier to see. And that looks like it's it for our alert message. The last method we need to write is update preferences. And what goes along with update preferences is read preferences. So we'll write that one too. Now I like to always put my preferences at the bottom of a file. So I'm going to use command arrow down to get to the bottom of our file. And I'm going to go right under our actions. And I'm going to put a pragma mark in that says preferences. And I'll highlight it. Use my shortcut. So the first one we'll write is the update preferences. And I think we need a little more room here to see. Let me put some returns there. The first thing we need to do is set up a variable for NS user defaults. And I'll call it user defaults. And we call a class method standard user defaults. And now we can start setting them up. We'll say user defaults. We'll set object. And the first object we want to set up is our username. So that's the object. And then the key that we're going to use is username. We're going to do another one for the password. And the key for it will be user pass. We also need to store the Boolean value of whether the user has been authorized or not. So we'll do that. 
Now the way NSUser defaults works, it can only store objects that know how to write themselves out to a plist file. Now a Boolean value does not know how to do that. For one, it's not an object. So the way we get around it is we create an NS number. So we'll say NS number, and we're going to use the number with bool, and the Boolean value we'll get from our isAuthorized variable. And the key we'll use for that is authorized. And to make sure that they write to file, we say user defaults, synchronize yourself. So let's go over this real quick just to make sure you understand what's happening. So we're going to create a variable of type NS user defaults. We're going to get an instance back by using the standard user defaults class method of NS user defaults. And once we get that instance back, we start talking to it. And NS user defaults uses a dictionary. So here we're saying set object. We give it the object and then we give it a key. So set object or key. We do that each time for each item that we want. And then we create an NS number for the Boolean value using the isAuthorized variable. And I made a mistake. That brace needs to go right here, or that won't work. And in the end, we just tell it to synchronize itself. And that way it writes it out to file and updates.